Pray this all on me. Pray this all on me. Let me go. Let me go. I've been going through so much. I swear these people let my throat. That's on me. That's on mamas. On my mama, I can't take no more. So miss me with that drama. Get your commas. Get your red straight. Get your facts straight. Hold me down. I rise up on her like the tax rate. Keep my past straight. Never lack faith. God been working. They gon' have to hold me back, man. And tell them, tell them, tell them. You can pick a side if you wanna. You already know who I bro with. You don't want no problems with What if we were known more for what we love instead of what we hate? Would that make a difference? What if we spent more time loving people and less time being angry with them? Would that make a difference? What if we gave unconditionally of our time, our talent, our treasures? Would that make a difference? What if we shared the difference Jesus has made in our lives and stopped pushing away those who aren't there yet? Would that make a difference? What if we walked in the steps of our Savior, sitting with the broken, caring for the poor, loving the lost? Would that make a difference? We live in the midst of ruins, surrounded by brokenness pain, and loss. It's a moment made for us, a calling we were created to answer, not with judgment, not with harsh words or self-righteousness, but with love, the love of Jesus. What if the church acted like the church that make a difference? I'm going to have you continue staying with me because we're going to go directly into our word. And out of respect to the word of God, we're going to stand and read it together today. So, we're going to read Psalm 8, all of the entire chapter of Psalm 8. How many, how many verses are in chapter, chapter Psalm 8, do you know? Any Bible scholars here? It's less than 10, so it's not all that, it's not all that long. All right, so Miss uh, Tr Patricia has done me the honor of pulling this up. Psalm 8, on my mark, we'll start with Oh Lord, continue. Our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies, and all who oppose you. Continue. Lord, and strengthen them, guide them, instruct them, encourage them, Lord God. 
even chasing them. Let them feel, Lord God, the chastening, the discipline, the, the correcting of a loving Father. Let them process it properly, knowing the Heavenly Father, the, the Lord, chastens only those whom He loves. Lord, it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. So, we have a pretty good crowd here this morning. I was kind of getting kind of worried there. We initially started out with like two, so uh, I, I will sit down eventually. Uh, so, again, our primary text is room, uh, Psalm chapter 8, all right, the entire, the entire chapter. So, what I want you to do for me is, <laughs> I want you to do for me is, we're going to ponder for me. We're going to examine a very popular topic among uh, Christians and non-Christians. Uh, and it's a, really a topic of debate. And hopefully that you guys have either, you have either engaged in it or at least witnessed it or heard it. And that is the debate between uh, Christianity and evolution. So, if you have heard or engaged in those type of conversations, show of hands, how many people have heard? Okay, good, 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 good. So, we have, so you have history, so you have some knowledge, um, either from, a, from an active participant in that conversation or, or a third party listener in that conversation, okay? Again, a very, a very common topic. Why are we doing this? Because we're still, we're still talking about uh, apologetics, Christian apologetics specifically, okay? So, you know how I like to do it. I always like, I like to roll with, the, with, with, with reviews uh, and, and, and summaries and things of that nature, right? So, I'm gonna ask you to remember, recall what you learned. Christian apologetics, give me one good definition of Christian apologetics. I'm sorry. Defending your faith. Defending your faith. That is one good definition. Anybody else have a good definition of Christian apologetics? Thank you, Dan. Understanding your faith. One more time. Understanding your faith. Understanding the word. You said understanding the word. Definitely in order in order for you to do some apologetics, apologetics or defending. Standing your ground, okay, you know, digging your feet in, saying this is the position that I have, you have to understand, absolutely understand the word. The definition I gave you was knowing what you believe, right? Right, remember that? Does that ring a bell? Remember the next part? Knowing why you believe it, and then being able to communicate that effectively in such a way that you ultimately change people's minds. Today, my objective here, and my objective always when I stand up to talk and preach or teach, is never to change or influence your behavior. That is, that is never my objective. My objective is to change your opinion about the sin that is, that is driving that behavior. Okay? I never want to change your behavior. I do want to change what you think about your God, okay? Do you think enough of your God that I love him more than this sin that I do? Okay? That's all I'm going to ever preach for. And that's what apologetics is. Apologetics is never to change anybody's behavior. It's to change their mind about the God that we serve. Okay? That's all it is. Knowing what you think. Why you, why you do it, why you believe that, and being able to communicate that effectively, okay? Defending your faith. The Bible tells us that we need to always be ready to, de to provide a defense, is what it says. In other words, if Kiana asks me a question about my faith, all right, I need to be able to respond to her legitimate question. That's all. That's all. Whether she accepts that or believes that, my job is not to prove God. Not, my job is not to prove, you know, why good is happening and why God good allows good, uh, evil to happen. And my job is simply to tell her why I believe what I believe. That makes sense? And that's all what apologetics is. And so, 
as we approach this particular lesson, just remember that. That, that was, that was, that was, uh, that was, that makes this today's uh, opportunity, effort to come out in the church all worth it. Now, that's, that's free on me. Anyway, so uh, evolution. We're going to be tackling, tackling the, the, uh, the issue or the concern, if you will, or the worldview of evolution. And so basically, when we talk about worldviews, Give me a quick definition of what you consider to be a worldview. What's a worldview? What do I mean by that? When you hear that term worldview, what is that? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> worldview. How you view the world. <laughs> right? How you view the world. In other words, your framework, your system, your set of beliefs that allows you to make sense of all that's going on, okay, all right, and that's what that's what we're doing here in, in 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 our Christian faith to help you make sense of what's going on. We are providing you a biblical or Christian worldview. Now that's different from all the other worldviews. Why? Not because we're arrogant to believe that we're better than anybody or anything of that nature, but because we believe there is one truth. Okay? Everybody can't be right about everything. Okay? Alright? And then we also are not audacious enough to believe uh, that I'm right. That's why we go to the Word of God. Okay? He's the one that's right. Our Creator is the one that's right. We simply adopt His thoughts his understanding, learn about his ways, get his view on how things should be going, and then adopt that. Make sense? And so that becomes our way of making sense of all that we are experiencing. Okay? Now, there's again, there's one truth. Everything else is, has to be a falsehood. Everything else has to be a lie. All right? And so that's the premise, and that's the, what we call the presupposition that the Christians stand on. That our God is not a liar, he is the truth. And whatever he speaks is true. Make sense? So, what our worldview, or the Christian worldview, against all others. And so, in the, in the coming weeks, you're going to hear other speakers. And I might be the first. I, I, what, what happened last week? Who, who was up last week? Do we know? Do you remember? Michael. Michael, did he talk uh, a particular worldview? I can't remember what was on the schedule. Should be well into. I was thinking that I was the first, but okay. So you may have actually already had some exposure of the Christian worldview uh, and the New Age movement, or the Christian worldview and postmodernism, or the Christian worldview and now today it, evolution. Okay. So, okay. Having said that, now we're going to get. Yeah, all right. How many? Have, how many people have seen a picture like this? On this side, no one. On this side, no one. Good, good. So we now, that, that, that's perfect. <laughs> All right. So what we have? A turtle on the fence, right? All right. So do me a favor. Look at that, evaluate that, assess that, and then tell me what ideas, what thoughts, um, what questions come to mind when you see this image. And anybody can start whenever you're ready. What ideas? What ideas are inspired by this? What think, questions are inspired by this? I would think who put it there? Let who? Think, can I take it home? And then <laughs> I think, there's a list. And then I think, yeah. there's a new spot. Okay. <laughs> can, I, can, I be, can I be chauvinistic for like one, one moment? Just one moment. I think you're the first one that ever said, can I take it home? <laughs> And I'm thinking that would be a woman thing. Can I take it home? Make it a pet? It's happened before. I came across turtles on the road. I never thought of that. But thank you. Uh, can I take it? That's actually not showing you that it's true. Like, we want to take it home. Dudes be like, that ain't none of my business. Can I take it home? All right, so who put it, who put it there? 
that, I think that was the third question. Yes. What, was the, what was the third question? Um, I, I don't know if there was. Where's the nearest pond? Yeah. Where's the nearest pond? Yeah. Where's okay. The Where? All right. I hear some. I hear some. Some collaboration over here. No. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you out anyway. Why? Harold, go ahead. Why is it there? Why is a turtle sitting up there on a on a fence post oh, on this kind of on this side of the room? Do I hear some collaboration over here? Tatiana, what you think? Why is the curved turtle that color? No, I'm just kidding. What thoughts, ideas? Think grand. Think big. When? Big. What'd you say? I said we're thinking big. When was it born? I'm sorry, I still didn't understand. When was it born? When was it born, you said, right? Oh, man, that's a good one. When was it born? Any other ideas? All right. Okay, all right. So we have, you know, why is it there? Can I, can I take it home? <laughs> can I take it home? Where's the nearest pond? You know, uh, Harold, refresh my memory. What was your question? Who put it there? Why was it there? Okay, and did I get that? Did I forget one of yours? Uh, where's the nearest pond? Near, where's the nearest pond? Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, so those are actually, you know, obviously the the basic thoughts that kind of come come with that. One well, one thing is we can conclude is that I think we all can come to agreement that that turtle didn't get there by itself, right? Right? I think we can, we can come to that, at least that, no. All right. So now, do me a favor, hold that thought. Now, let's think a little about, about some of the things that you've come into contact with. You may not have seen, like I said, you may not have seen it. Identify for me, if you will, a architectural structure or a device, maybe something like a cell phone or computer or whatever. Identify for me uh, something <laughs> All right, that you are amazed by something that you are, you know, interested in, you know, something like I said of significant, I don't know, for lack of a better term, it just has features about it that just make you go, wow, this oh, is amazing. Oh, my game sits on my laptop. One more time. My game Sims, it's called Sims 4, but it's simulation 4, and basically you can, like you can control little people's lives. Okay. It just amazes me. That so, it's a game, yeah. right? A game, all right? Did you guys, y'all hear that? Anybody else play that? No, no, no. No, you're the only one, because you're the only one. Uh, <laughs> you played it? Uh, all right, that's one of those turtle take home games. Yeah. <laughs> all right, okay. And the name of it, forgive me, the name of Sims? Yes. Sims. All right. So, anything else? How about like a, like a piece of architecture, a structure, a building, a coliseum, something that just amazes you? Have y'all seen where the Rams play these years, oh. these days? Yeah. Is it that SoFi Stadium? Yeah. You impressed by that? That's yeah, pretty cool stadium. Pretty cool, pretty cool stadium. Been? Have you been yet? No? You can't? Pretty cool stadium. Do me a favor, pull up SoFi Stadium. SO, I think it's SO, SCO, F dash FI. Huh? There's no C. Is what? There's no C in it. Oh, it's just SoFi? Yeah. Okay. It's like SoFi. All right. Any one of those would work. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. This is a football stadium. I right? remember when Jerry World was built and everybody was like, ah, oh, Jerry. Well, this makes Jerry World look like it's a playground, right? So, uh, pretty, pretty impressive, right? Pretty impressive. What thoughts, what ideas come to mind when you see something like that? Like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Sir, what comes to mind when you think of something, when you see that, that image? Money, that cost. Money, how much money did it cost? Cost of what? 
How much money did it cost to what? To, to actually build it, right? Right? Because, you know, that kind of goes, that kind of leads to another thought or takes us back a thought, and that is, once again, that, that stadium didn't just appear. There's something behind this stadium, right? There's something behind a, a turtle sitting on a fence, right? You following me? Right? So, so we looked at a couple of examples when in the natural world. Now, what I would like for you to do is tell me, what's the intention of something like this? What's the purpose of something like this? I mean, we should have come up with at least one idea for everybody in here as far as purpose. Let's just get one idea from everybody. We're going to start with Gabby. Gabby, what's the, what you, what what's the purpose of something like this? All right, increase increase volume. We want more people in in seats. All right, thank you, ma'am. Macy, next. What's the purpose of a big old stadium? What's the purpose? Okay. Okay. What? Hold more people. Hold more people. That's that similar to hers. Go ahead. Destiny. It draws people's oh, attention. Message. So we have an aesthetic statement. In other words, yes. does it look good? Yes. Does it look good? All right. Tati. Get people's money. Oh. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> to get people's money. To get people's money. Guess what it is? The objective. There is, yes, I am not going to put, I forget, I think it's like two billion. I, can't, I don't remember. I am not going to put two billion into something and not expect anything out of it. I'm going to get somebody's money. Tell me you. All right, thank you. She took your answer. I don't think that's a good answer, but we, we're going to give you a pass on that. On this side. What's the purpose? What's the intention? To hold a football game. In other words, to, to facilitate a particular type of event. Okay? A specific event. And, then, and you know, you kind of go through the room and y'all can, can play all of that. And I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and let you all do it. We can do soccer, boom. We can do NCAA tournament, boom. We can, we can do concerts, boom, all right? So all types of events, so it could facilitate, but nonetheless, it could facilitate specific types of events. In other words, there is a purpose to this. It wasn't, it wasn't created by itself. And it wasn't created randomly. It was created with a specific or specific purposes in mind. That's good. You following me? That's good. You following me? Yeah, that's good. How and what in the world has that got to do with evolution? Everything. The answer is everything. Why? Because evolution tells us Basically, what does that what does that you? What does evolution tell us? Is it like the theory of evolution? Is it like um, is it like the Big Bang theory, or is that something different? The Big Bang theory is one of those. It's kind of like the origin, if you will, of, of the evolution of uh, the theory of evolution. It's kind of like the starting point okay. in that theory. <laughs> <laughs> that we were something before we are what we are and what happened is over time things changed and we became what we are right in a, in a nutshell right all right so um why do you think intelligent people would be inclined to believe a theory that we came out of nothing basically or just a the Big Bang theory. We came out of nothing and evolved and slowly evolved into what we are now. Why would you think intelligent people would believe that theory? And this is really going to be a challenge to you because you were taught this in school, probably. Right? You weren't taught evolution in school? Okay. Were you taught evolution in school? By the way, how many people were taught evolution in school? Okay, we have a couple. 
You're tall and little. Okay, so, no. so not everybody was. That's interesting. So I'm assuming we got some private school things going on. No? Just some some, some public school. Just, <laughs> just some public schools didn't do it. Have it in their curriculum. Interesting. I didn't know that. I thought it was still part of all uh, mainline public school prison. So very interesting. So some will talk. So why would you think intelligent people would believe that we could come, we we as complicated as we are, and by the way, we're so complicated that we human beings have not figured everything out about us. If they had, guess what? We have a cure for everything. We have a fix for everything. So we're so complicated that we have, we don't know, we don't even understand our own bodies. So why would intelligent people believe that, hey, something happened, right, out of nothing, and something came out of nothing, and now we are what we are today because of that. Yes, ma'am. So evolution is easier to explain, is what you're saying. It fills in some of those gaps, yeah. right? Is that what you're saying, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't want, don't, don't let me put words in your mouth. No, so, okay, it. okay, so it's some gap fillers, all right? So it, it, it caters to those who <laughs> need to know why popcorn pops, you know? Yes. All right, and okay, what else? What else might con convict or compel an intelligent, an intelligent being to believe that uh, the, the, in the theory of evolution. I think because it's something tangible. It's, it's tangible, like, something. It's, okay. It's tangible. Like I can explain this. Yeah. I can explain this. I can't explain that. <laughs> and so I can actually speak to this. I can. I can let people see it because people see with their eyes. They believe it. I can make people believe this because they can see it happening in front of them. Okay. So, the whole science thing. Yeah. so we have this this, this, this this universal point of reference, which is what you're talking about. So basically, we can make the assumption that throughout all public schools, you've been exposed to this. So I can I can relate to this, and I can embrace this because you know what I'm talking about, or you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Think about this. Maybe it's because they were simply told to believe that and they didn't deviate from it. In other words, when you are introduced to evolution, where are you? You are in a school environment, you are taught to respect your authority, all right, and not question your authority, all right? And so now, somebody's telling you something, all right, whether it's, it's the truth or not, somebody's telling you something, and you have to make in, up in your mind your undeveloped Mind, and I'm not saying that in a in a in a negative sense, all right. But your 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 mind is still being developed. In other words, your worldview has not been shaped yet. Okay, there's one for one thing. Yes, ma'am. This is so funny. When Kiel was younger, he got taught revolution, not revolution, evolution in school, and he came home, and I was we were having a talk, and he was like, Mama. Do you know that the Bible is a lie? <laughs> Everything was created with evolution. You know, because he had been told this, and he was like, and he understood it because it was science. He was like, I have to, we came from monkeys. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he was young, he was young. And I think he was like, like maybe third grade, maybe second, third grade. And I pulled out Genesis in the Bible. I said, son, that's not what we believe. And we read through Genesis. And I was like, this is what we believe. I said, you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. He was like, yeah, I do. And I said, well, this is how we came to be. And he said, they, they lied to us. Yes, they are. <laughs> and so, but oh. yeah, it was, it, he, were he was told that. And like you said, he, because. Took it and ran with it. Yes. 
And, yes. and you are, thank you for introducing, you're teaching, my, you're teaching my lesson for me, so thank you. Oh, sorry. But you know, that's, 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 good. that's what's supposed to happen. She challenged that, okay? She said, no, this is, this, is really what the, this is really what the deal is. But, again, if you are, if that is not, if an alternative is not presented to you, then guess what? You grow up to become an intelligent being, and you have this one idea of how things really happen, and you didn't let it go because guess what? That's all you've been exposed to, right? And so that's another reason why intelligent people will believe that something happened to nothing, and out of nothing came something, and now, millions of years later, we, these, these complicated individuals, are in existence, right? So let's go a little bit further. All right, we're, we're almost out of time, so, but we do have a, quick, uh, a couple of quick things that we can talk about here. Uh, when I share these, these images with you, take away this. There's, there's, there's an intelligent design, designer, should I say, behind these things. Mm -hmm. The turtle on the fifth post, all right, didn't get there by himself or itself. It had to ha happen as a result of an intelligent being monitoring, managing, or orchestrating things, okay? So that's what that's all about, okay? Evolution does not teach that. Evolution teaches the opposite. There is no intelligent design behind anything. There is no intention behind anything. There's no purpose behind anything. As we saw, there's purpose in everything that's going on, okay? When we saw that picture of the, of the, of the, of the stadium, we, we saw there was purpose in it. Get somebody's money. Somebody built that thing to host events, you know, purpose in it, all right? When you look in the mirror, there's purpose in what you see. Divine purpose in what you see. Okay, next point. Um, and I'm going to actually go ahead and go to a couple of uh, the, the idea that science and and Christianity can exist. So I'm going to ask you to pull out your phones, if you have them with you. And I know that you do. Look at job. All right. Uh, OK, we got to look at Last row. I want you to look up Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40, 22. And Gabby on your Gabrielle and your row Lacey, you can look up Psalm 104. No, you look up Genesis. Genesis 1, verses 9 through 10. And just for recap, that's Isaiah 40, verses, verse number 22. Genesis 1. 9 verses 9 through 10. And over here, I'll give you guys two. Genesis 1 verses 11 through 13. And Hebrews 7 and 10. Okay. All right. Isaiah 40, 22. Read that for us. Out loud so everybody can hear it. intentional and purposeful design of the, the universe. What do you think, what, what, what can we tell about the intentions of the designer from that particular verse? Does it say anything about the earth? The existence? What the earth looks like? No? 
Okay, what, is, what, is, what, what does it tell you about the earth? What image does it give you? That it's round, right? Right? So the intention, the design there is that from an astronomical perspective, the Lord or the Creator made the earth round. And the earth being a part of the universe, part of the galaxy, he made the earth round, right? So that's Bible existing, coexisting with science. Science has come to the conclusion that what? The earth is not flat, but the earth is indeed round. Make sense? And there are scriptures, my point is there are scriptures throughout the Bible that talks about various aspects of the, the Creator's intentional design of the universe. Um, Gabriel, which, which one did I give you? Can you read that for me out loud? Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place, so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground land and the waters the seas, and God saw that it was good. All right. What does that tell you about the intentional design? You're thinking, I know you same question I'm giving everybody. So what are you thinking? I think I think you're there, Macy. You just got to say it. Have y'all heard the term Pangea? Oh yeah. What's that? That all the land masses were together, right? And when you look at the some of the configurations, the shapes, if you will, of the various continents, you you can kind of put that together in your mind. So read that first portion of that again. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one piece. Thank you. That's good. One into one place. Okay? Into one place. Which gives us the idea that's consistent with science that, that if the waters were in one place, okay, then that means the land mass was in one place. When the land mass was all together. Make sense? So there you have that, that, that concept of Pangea coming into into existence with the, with science and Christianity. Okay? All right. So, I got 1053. Let's let's start. Let's not rob this side of the room of the opportunity to share. I gave you two, but we're only going to do one. And uh, let's do let's do Hebrews uh, 7:10. I think I gave you Hebrews 7:10, right? One of them. And by the way, that that verse what area of science does that geographical idea of Pangea kind of work with? The study of what? Geology. That's geology. So the first was the study of, you remember, astronomy, because we talked about the Earth and, the, and it being round. Geology here. And now we're going to go into one other area, and that is, I'll let y'all let you guys figure this one out. This is pretty easy. Hebrews 7, verse 10. Read it out loud for me. Um, for although Levi wasn't born yet, the seed from which he came was in Abraham's body when, uh, I can't pronounce, <laughs> Malachizedek. I'm sorry, how did he? Oh, Melchizedek. Melchizedek collected the tithe from him. Okay. So, what do you get from there? What does that tell you about the creatives, the creator's intention in creating whatever it is he's created? And science. Does it talk about something coming out of someone's loins? Did I hear that? It came from Abraham. Okay. How did it get there? A natural process called procreation, right? Procreation. So you have a man and a woman engaged in a natural process of procreation, right? So therefore we have the science of biology letting us know that a man and a woman both carry seed uh, the seed of life. Okay? 
In other words, life does not come from, what does evolution teach you? It teaches life comes from a single cell bacteria, right? You know, it, it teaches that these cells just randomly just decide to start splitting and breaking, and boom, we have more of them, right? That is not what the Bible teaches, right? The Bible teaches that it takes a man, it takes a woman, both must have the appropriate seeds, they come together and do the procreation act, and then out of Abraham's loins comes it, it, uh, man, if you will, without people being born. So that's biology right there. Make sense? So you have biology, you have geology, you have astronomy, you have science existing with Christianity. All right? So hopefully that kind of gives you a perspective of how you can interact or involve yourself in a discussion, if you will, of between a Christian worldview and an individual who has a, a worldview of evolution. Make sense? So now what I want to do is, let me ask you one question. And when I'm done, I'm just going to ask you a question and I'm done. Then I'm done. Based on what we talked today, talked about today, what do you think about the evolution, about the theory of evolution now? Did it, did anything, was anything presented today that presented a Cause you to challenge your thoughts about evolution? Um, feel differently about evolution? Feel differently even about the Christian faith? No, no takers. No takers. So we're all probably all solid Christian, have solid, solid Christian worldviews, but I'm going to take it. Take that as. Okay? All right. Well, it may have changed, uh, may have made some type of impact, may have moved the needle a little bit um, by all means. This can be a bit of a, of a struggle, of a challenge, because when you have learned something and known something one way all of your life, and someone comes and tells you something otherwise, it can be a challenge. So um, definitely want to let you know that we are here to, to support you in whatever way we need to support you in helping you to embrace a Christian worldview. Okay, because that's what we are here about. Right? Not here to change your opinion, not here to change your behavior, remember? I'm here to change your mind. Your mind about your creator, your mind about the fact that, that there is a creative design and intention behind you. Okay? Okay. Having said that, I'm going to go ahead and close uh, with the word of prayer, but I'm going to ask you close your eyes, bow your head, because I want to present an opportunity for those who may very well want to, uh, to receive the gift of salvation. Um, the gift of salvation is just that, and that is that uh, that Creator saves us, uh, and He saves us from what particularly? Um, when we talk about salvation, we talk about one thing, and that's saving us from the penalty of sin. All right, He saves us from other things once we are saved, but once we are saved from the penalty of sin, but we have to first be saved from the penalty of sin, sin which is what we call justification, and that happens simply as a result of placing your faith in one Lord, and that is Jesus Christ. So, with your eyes closed, head bowed, if there's anybody in the room that would like to receive that, uh, that gift of salvation, just do me a favor and wave at me. Uh, if you have not positively responded to the gospel message that Jesus Christ purposefully came to this earth with one reason in mind, and that is to redeem or to reconcile those who had fallen from grace as a result of Adam's sin back to, to God and you can be reconciled with him. Thank you so much. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your creative design. We thank you, Father, that Lord, you are, you are your ways are higher than our ways. We cannot possibly comprehend you. Uh, our faith in you certainly is, has to be received and not explained. I'll say that again, our faith in you, okay, not our faith in me or my faith in a theory or anything, but my faith in you has to be received and not explained. But in the receiving, you are faithful, Lord God, to reveal yourself to us, to solidify in us the ability to receive the faith in you. So thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ 
and the price that he's paid for us. That we may, Lord God, through the substitution of our Savior Jesus Christ, step into his place and become children of God. That we can become right, the very righteousness of God. That we can become the very favored creation of God, Lord God. So it's in the name of Jesus we give you glory and praise. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. I got them shackles off my feet, yeah, yeah. Can't put me back up in the streets, yeah, yeah. I couldn't move, but now I'm free, yeah, yeah. I got them shackles off my feet, yeah, yeah.